Catherine Bolkovac is a human rights activist, former police investigator, and former monitor with the United Nations International Police Task Force in Bosnia, although she is best known as a whistleblower after she released reports and documents proving that human trafficking was being organized by internationals post-war in Bosnia. December 14, 1995, the Dayton Peace Agreement was signed, officially ending four years of brutal conflict in Bosnia. In 1999, Catherine Bolkovic became an international police monitor in Bosnia for a company called DynCorp. The mission of DynCorp was to restore order and enforce laws in Bosnia after the Bosnian War ended in 1995. The International Police Task Force was created and made responsible for monitoring and advising local Bosnia police forces. Catherine's role was to supervise gender-related human rights investigations, specifically domestic violence and human trafficking of women and children. Additionally, their mandate included investigations of human rights abuses by law enforcement personnel. Thoughts about this company not being completely what it was uh, advertising itself to be um, started before I left the United States during the recruitment process. And then once I got hired by this company and uh, spent a week in Fort Worth, Texas at a training program they gave, it became a bit more noticeable because at that time one gentleman came in and announced that he knew where to find really nice 12 to 15 year olds once we got to Bosnia. So that particular statement stuck in my mind. I tried to bury it, thinking that I misunderstood. But once I got to Bosnia and discovered the number of brothels and the type of activity that was actually going on within the country, with all internationals, not just nine core and the US citizens, but many, many countries, um, it became quite clear that this was a huge organized crime and uh, very active. During the Bosnian post-war, demand for sex work increased with the arrival of peacekeeping troops and 80% of the sex trade revenue was provided by uniformed service members or civilian contractors. Without a waiver of immunity from the UN or NATO, members of the international community could never face charges in Bosnia and could only be convicted for the crimes committed in the jurisdiction and country of their origin. We had um, jewelry identifications, we had tattoo identifications, we had uniforms, um, so Really, a simple investigative process would have been able to probably implicate a lot of people had those investigations been allowed to continue. The problem was the investigations were not allowed to continue once the International was implicated in the investigation. Catherine was the head of the Gender Office, so she oversaw all the human rights investigations that involved the human trafficking of these women and children. The head of admission was willing to cover up problems and lie to the public that nothing was going on although he had viewed the reports and heard from many officers who reported problems. The State Department and the UN knew about the men involved and were sending them home, but they didn't take any other actions to stop the crime. Luckily, Catherine saved copies of the case numbers and copies of the reports she turned over, and these helped build her case. She wrote to 50 UN colleagues explaining the circumstances. Four days later, she was demoted and a few months later, DynCorp fired her, claiming that she had falsified her timesheet. I had to sue DynCorp uh, in the United Kingdom because ultimately they terminated me for uh, what they claimed was falsifying timesheets. Uh, I didn't do that, so that was uh, proven to be wrong and the tribunal, after hearing all the evidence in several days of court hearings, um, clearly came to the unanimous decision that DynCorp was lying. And uh, so I uh, was able to win a small settlement and gain, you know, at least my credibility back as a police officer. However, at that point in time, it was really too late for me uh, to do anything else in the international world. I could have at any point in time quit and gone back to the United States and, and gone back to my home police department and gone back to being 
an investigator or a police officer there. But that really wasn't what my goal was. My goal was to still work internationally and to uh, continue. However, I've never been rehired by the international organizations or by the UN. And um, I still feel the stigma is there that I potentially am a loose cannon, per se, or maybe cannot be trusted with what they might consider confidential information. Since the case, DynCorp has continued to get involved in similar incidents of criminal behavior in Bosnia, Iraq, Afghanistan, Mexico, and Colombia. Today, Catherine lives in the Netherlands with her family. She has not had the opportunity to continue her career as an international investigator. She has told her story in a book, which in 2010 was turned into a movie called The Whistleblower.